and one day in his house I will ever live with him. Amen. Amen. That's true. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful this morning? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To know that he is your shepherd. Amen. Amen. The shepherd leads the sheep. Amen. Right. Yes. You drive cattle, you lead sheep. Right. Amen. He said, My sheep will know my voice. Amen. That's it. He calls and his sheep follow. Right. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. My, my, my. If you have your Bible with you this morning, turn to Romans, the 8th chapter, in the 28th verse. Romans 8 and 28. And I hope by the time that we're through with this, that the Lord will have imprinted this on your mind. So that whenever things happen in your... How many people had things happen this week that you didn't like? Amen. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Listen, if everything went your way this week and you stayed happy all week, God bless your heart. Yeah, man. <laughs> you really must be holy. <clears throat> but how many people, let me see your hand, if something happened this week, you didn't like it. Oh, Amen. Right. Maybe it made you angry. Yeah. Maybe it made you dissatisfied. Oh. Maybe you just got plumb put out thinking, well, I never. Amen. Mm. Well, let's all read this Scripture together this morning. Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know, I don't hear nobody, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. And we know that all things, we're going to know, amen, we are learning this morning. The Apostle Paul said, I have learned in whatever state I'm in, and he wasn't talking about Kentucky or Tennessee, whatever state I'm in, whether things are good or whether things seem to be bad, whether I'm on the mountain or whether I'm in the valley, whether I'm in the field that's full of green grass or I'm in the desert where you can't even find a strand of grass, amen, no matter where I'm at, if I'm in the wilderness, no matter where I'm at, God has taught me I have learned to be content. Amen. We learned this from David over there in Psalms, the 23rd chapter, where he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, Brother David, that does not mean you're going to get everything that Brother David wants. That's right. I'm sorry. That's Amen. That's but, but Brother Billy, the Bible says, The Lord shall give me the desires of my heart. I wish we'd read that scripture a little closer. Yeah. I wish we'd chew on it a little bit longer. Come on. Amen. He will give you the desires, meaning He will give you desire in your heart for Him. Right. He will give you desires for godly things. Amen. He will give you desires for... See, the Bible says you have not you have not because you ask not. And it says that you have not because you ask amiss. Amen. So you can, you can consume it upon your own lust. Uh, Amen. You ain't going to get everything you want that your old flesh wants. Right. But if you can get to the place where you're content with the fact that Jesus <clears throat> is your shepherd. Amen. Amen. He will be sufficient and enough. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't mean I'll get everything that my flesh desires. It just means that He's my shepherd. I will want no more. Amen. He's my shepherd this morning, Sister Nancy. I will want no other. Amen. He's my shepherd this morning. I'm content with the fact that He is enough for me. Amen. Amen. Jesus is enough. Right. Say, but yeah, I got to have more. Well, then you ain't got what I got. Because when He came in, Amen, I realized that He is more than enough. Amen. He's my fountain in the midst of the wilderness. Amen. He's my bread when I'm hungry. He's my breath when I need to breathe. He's the beat of my heart this morning. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want for no other. He is God and besides Him there is no other. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. And all things work together for good to them that love God that call according to His purpose. Right. We've been trying to learn that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on. Now I want to ask you another question about the things you went through this week. Yeah. Maybe something happened and things didn't go exactly like you wanted. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody, you know, crossed your path that did you wrong. All right. How many of us can honestly say that the first thing that came into our mind was, <clears throat> Lord, I know. <clears throat> that this is going to work together for my good. Amen? That ain't usually what the first thing comes to our mind, is it? The first thing that comes to our mind is like, well, this makes me mad. Amen? 
This beats all I ever seen. Well, I never. Yes, sir. Amen. Something besides, Lord, yeah, thank you know what's best. Thank you, Lord. I know you're going to use this for my good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on. I know you're going to use this for my good. Yeah. I ain't going to ask you to raise your hand and tell me because <laughs> I don't know if any of us thought that first thing this no. week. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But we, we can get to that place. Yeah. Amen. It's not impossible today to get to the place whenever things hit and the storm's raging that the first thing that comes to your mind is, is hey, I've been here before. Yeah. I remember how God used this before for my good. You see, I ain't no stranger to the valley. Amen. I've been here before and I know that my shepherd is Lord of the valley. I know that he's going to work it for my good. We started off a couple of weeks ago on this sermon talking about the Syrians over there in 1 Kings, the 20th chapter, I believe it is. And Brother Scott, you missed it. But I'll tell you, you probably already read it a thousand times, but the Syrians were coming up against God's people and they had lost to God's people on the mountain. Yeah. But the Syrians decided, they went to their king and they said, listen, we know how to beat them. If we can get them in the valley, see their God is the God of the hills, the God of the mountain, but He's not God in the valley. Oh, they was in for a rude awakening, wasn't they? <laughs> they said, if we can get them in the valley, we can beat them. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, that's what and I told you, oh, you know what God's response was? He sent a man to tell them, thus saith the Lord. Yeah. The Syrians think that I'm not God of the valley, but I'm just God of the mountain. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the victory in your hands. Right. Talking to the Israelites who sat before them as no more than kids compared to this army, but God gave them the victory so He could show the enemy that, hey, I ain't just God on the mountain. I'm God in the valley too. Amen? Amen. And I told you this morning that your enemy believes yeah. if He can get you in the valley, He can defeat you. Not because your enemy don't think God's God in the valley, but because He ain't sure you do. Amen? He ain't sure you believe it. You know why? Because He's heard what you say when you're in the valley. Yeah. He's heard you sing and moan the blues. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So He's thinking, I'm not sure that they have as much faith in their God when they're in the valley as they do when they're on the mountaintop. So if I can get them in the valley, I think I can defeat them. Amen? I think I can defeat them. Not because He don't know God's God in the valley. I done told you. He's had many, many giants lose their head in the valley to God. Amen? So He knows that God, Jehovah, Ye Yeshua, Mashiach, the great I Am, is still God in the valley. He just ain't sure you're convinced of that. He just ain't sure you're convinced of that. And we talked about the valley of the shadow of death, which we're going to talk about again here in a minute. We talked about the valley of decision. The Bible says multitudes and multitudes in the valley of decision. Right. And we talked about how that in the Hebrew this here, this valley of decision, this decision word also means a threshing. It means a sifting. It means as if one is panning for gold, you know, shaking and yeah. looking for the good. How many times have you felt in your life that you was being put through a threshing? Amen. Yeah. You was putting being put through the sifter. That seemed like everything. You know, the Bible says that Jesus turned to Peter and said, Peter, Satan had desired to what? Sift you as wheat. Amen? Amen. You've been in a sifting. You've been in a sifting valley. You've been in the valley of decision. And it wouldn't be long before Peter was there. Amen? It wouldn't be long until Peter was facing the biggest decision of his life. Come on. After he denied Jesus, he had to decide either to fish or cut bait. Amen? Right. He had to decide whether either to repent, get up and go on, or just give up. Yeah. So he had him in the valley of decision. He thought, if I can get Peter... See, Peter is the one that boasted and said, I'll go with you. Yeah. I'll go with you all the way to the death. Right. And Satan thought, yeah, that's because you're feeling the glory right now. Yeah. If I can get you to a place where you feel crumbled, where you feel sifted, where you feel like you're really going through it, yeah. if I can get you in the valley, then let's see what you do. Come on. Yeah. And we all know what happened with Peter. Right. He repented. He staggered out on the day of Pentecost after being filled with the Holy Ghost and preached the most powerful sermon that had been preached at that time. Amen. Come on. By one of the disciples who saw thousands added to the church. Mm. Stood before all of Jerusalem. Yeah. And said, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. All right. Amen. Come on. So he believes if he can get you in the valley of decision, he can get a foothold on you. That's right. Then we talked about the valley of Baca, which is the valley of weeping. And we talked about how all of us have been there. There have been times you felt like you've cried every tear you had. Amen? amen. You'll have to say amen if you don't want to. I know you've been there. We've all been there. Amen? Yeah. 
We've been through the valley. We've been through the place where it seemed like there was no hope. Yeah. Have you been there before? Amen. Do you see now how that there was hope? Amen. Because God brought you through. When Sister Nancy's talking about seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, I couldn't help but think of something funny that Brother Billy Frizzell told me once. You know, some things stick in your mind you never forget, and some things you can't remember from one day to the next. Yeah. Brother Billy Frizzell said, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh. Lord, I hope it ain't a train. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Sometimes you feel like that. Amen. Yeah. One thing, what is going to happen next? Have you ever thought that? Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Can I get down to where we live this morning? Have you ever thought what in the world's going to happen next? Amen. Yeah. Everything's breaking. Everything's going bad. Every bill's due. Amen. Yeah. I don't have no money. I'm too sick to work. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. Amen. Come on. Listen, like we said the last week or the week before. I don't know what holds what tomorrow holds, amen, but I know who holds tomorrow, amen, and that is more than just some kind of cliche or some kind of fancy saying to me. I can lay my head down tonight knowing that if I get up in the morning by the grace of God, He's still on the throne and He will still be God and He changes not, amen? He's still God. That's true. And if He worked all things together for the good of those that we read about in the, in the Bible, yeah. He will work all things together for you today for your Amen. good. That's right. Amen. Like the pieces of a puzzle, He will work those things yeah. together for your good. His Word is still the same today. That's Amen. Right. I don't think we get that. Sometimes we read this like, like we do some of the fairy tales that we were told in school. Yeah. We read this and we don't realize just how real it is. That's true. It's real enough that Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away. Oh, wow. But my word will never not pass away. My word will remain. Amen. Oh, wow. Heaven and earth. This earth that you see it as it is will pass away, but God's word will still be here. Amen. Heaven that we talk about going to. You're not really going to live forever in that heaven because that heaven's going to pass away. Oh. John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down from God. Amen. Yeah. He saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had passed away. That's in Revelations. Amen. Come on. So see, heaven and earth are going to pass away. But God's Word is forevermore true. Come on. Amen. We talked about the Valley of Ono. Come on. The Valley of Compromise. Right. Amen. We talked last week about the Valley of Dry Bones. Do you remember that? Yes. Hallelujah. And many times we felt like we've been there. Amen. We felt like there was no moisture. Sister Nancy had testified, I think, last Sunday morning or about that. Felt like you've been going through a dry place. Anybody ever been there before? Amen. Anybody ever been to the place where you felt like there hadn't been a drop of rain in so long? You don't remember when it did rain last? Yeah. Amen. Come on. You're just dry. You ain't felt the Spirit of God. You haven't heard His voice. You haven't felt His touch. Yet you know He's there because His Word said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you, but I'll go with you all the way to the end. Amen? He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never... Brother, Brother Billy, I don't feel Him. Don't matter. Brother Billy, I don't see Him. Don't matter. I can't feel Him. I can't touch Him. I can't smell Him. Don't matter. I can't hear Him. Doesn't matter. He's still there. Why? Because His Word said so. I'm trying to get across the point. I know I'm not very good. I'm not as good a speaker as Joel is. Amen? I don't speak as eloquent as Billy Graham, but I can speak good enough this morning to tell you that Romans 8 and 28 is as plain as the nose on your face when it says that all things work together for your good. Amen? Do you love the Lord this morning? Are you called according to His purpose? Then that means everything, well, Brother Billy, just the good to no, know, everything, well, something, no, everything works.